if you were if you are visiting with us today or you're somewhat irregular and you weren't here last week, we are in the middle of a series of discussions, short teachings and discussions on the digital first church plant that I've been appointed to start come this July, but really is in process now. Last week, we talked a little bit about it. This week, being Mother's Day, I had thought maybe not doing it, but then I realized the very last question or the very last topic that I planned to talk about as a part of this series actually fits perfectly with this day. And what we're going to do today is we are going to, I'm going to teach you or give you a little bit of philosophy behind what it means for Niles first UMC to be the mother of a church plant because that's what we are and to and then I will open it up if anybody has any questions based on that or anything they thought of since last week and, and I'll answer what I can now I do recognize that there that some of y'all somebody came to me and said I don't even know what to ask I don't know enough about this to know what to ask and so if that is you and you feel like you might come up with something during the week that just becomes pressing because you thought of it. I get it. I understand. I don't expect everybody to understand everything that I say or everything that we talk about here. The goal of this whole series, though, is to get everybody in the congregation aware of what's happening, how it's happening, why it's happening, and what isn't changing, what is changing. Again, One of the things that isn't changing is this church is going to be around. It's not closing. And to that effect, I will be here physically on Sunday mornings. I think some people were concerned that they were going to have to start engaging with me digitally, like that I would be putting my videos up on the screen or something. I have done that in the past at churches, but that's not not what's going to happen here. Your experience here in this building or online, if you're worshiping with us online right now, is going to be exactly the same. You will notice no difference there. So if you were concerned that, that you couldn't engage with this church anymore because it's, it's all different all of a sudden, this is not. You can calm that concern. But today's goal is to talk about some of the best aspects of motherhood and what that means for being the mother of this church plant. Happy Mother's Day. Let's just start with that again. Happy Mother's Day to all the wonderful mothers that are present here uh, as we celebrate this day. We want to recognize and honor the women in our lives, though they may not be birth mothers, as I said before. They may not be your birth mother, but women who have taken on the role of caregiver and mentor and nurturer in your life, in all of our lives. These women embody the spirit of motherhood by selflessly giving their time, their love, and their care, shaping the lives of those around them. So today we're going to celebrate all women who have made a lasting impact on our lives for their invaluable contributions to our growth and well-being deserve our utmost appreciation and gratitude. And yes, I am fully aware that we have, all of us have not had, we we all haven't had perfect mothers. There are some of us who have had mothers that we would, (laughs) that, that were a struggle. I've made no secret about my relationship with mine. So Mother's Day has always been an interesting holiday for me to observe. But the reality is that even in the moments where maybe our blood mother couldn't give us the care and love because they couldn't give it to themselves even. In those cases where our family bond was weak, we all probably had somebody, some woman in our life that sacrificed for us, that gave time for us, that gave resources for us, even though they didn't need to. I had a couple of those in my life. So where my own birth mother lacked i had three or four growing up that took on that role and i wouldn't be here without them so if your mom is awesome great awesome for you if your mom wasn't and you found some surrogate moms awesome if you are somehow find yourself outside of all of that then i welcome you into this community i invite you into this community because i promise there are lots of moms in here that want to help take care of you that want to help love you that want to help bring you further along and make your life something worth looking forward to. As we celebrate and honor all of the motherly women in our lives, I'm going to draw that connection between Mother's Day and being the mother church of a church plant. Not just a digital church plant, but just church planting in general. And 
if you're wondering, why are they doing this? Why did the conference decide to do this? Our goal as churches is to make disciples of Jesus Christ. It is not to get converts or members into our churches. It is to make disciples. Sometimes that means planting new churches because the existing ones don't meet all the needs of all the people. And that's okay. That is okay. One of the most historically church things we can do as a church is plant a new faith community. Let me say that one again. One of the most historic things that we can do as a church is plant a new faith community. It is multiplication, and that's exactly what we should be doing. So when we get the chance to be the mother of something like that, it's a big deal, and it has deep historic religious roots. So our purpose today is to appreciate the role of mothers and the role of the mother church in nurturing that growth. Mothers play an irreplaceable role in the lives of their children. They shape and guide their lives with love, care, and sacrifice. As it says in Proverbs 31, 31, 25 through 28 says, She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. A mother's strength and dignity are truly praiseworthy. Similarly, spiritual mothers invest in the lives of others by mentoring, nurturing, and shaping them spiritually, as mentioned in Titus 2, 3 through 5. Mothers, both physical and spiritual, have an eternal impact on the spiritual growth of those around them. Proverbs 1 reminds us of this importance of a mother's guidance and wisdom when it says, Listen, my son, to your father's instruction, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. They are a garland to grace your head and a chain to adorn your neck. So let's consider the role of the mother church in this church plant. Let's consider the role of Niles First UMC in this church plant. The mother church nurtures the growth of a new church by equipping empowering and guiding it to thrive as described in Ephesians 4:11-12 where it says so Christ himself gave the apostles the prophets the evangelists the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up whereas as the mother church it is our role to emulate Christ as the bride of Christ it is our role to emulate that and build up Providing resources and support is a crucial aspect of the mother church. 2 Corinthians 9, 8-9 reassures us that God's grace is sufficient for every good work, so our sacrifice is not in vain. It says, God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things and in all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. This includes meeting the needs of new ministries. I know one of the things we get caught up in his church is trying to revive old ministries that died for a reason. But one of the things, again, historic things that the church should be doing is investing in new ministries, meeting the needs of new ministries like a church plant, ensuring and ensuring their spiritual health. So there is a parallel between the essence of motherhood and the role of the mother church, Niles First UMC, in nurturing growth. Both roles require love. They require care. They require sacrifice, and both have a significant influence on the spiritual growth of others. The fruits of labor in these roles bring joy. Being a mother is laborious, but it is joyful, as seen in the growth and development of a new church or the spiritual growth of a child. This is good work in the eyes of God and the world. Let me say that again. This is good work in the eyes of God and the world. And Galatians 6, 9 reminds us not to grow weary in doing good, don't grow weary in doing good, for in due time we will reap the harvest of blessings. Now, I cannot tell you exactly what the tangible nature of those blessings is going to be, but I can tell you they're going to be there. So let us appreciate the dedication and hard work of mothers, the mother church, in nurturing growth. It is our duty and indeed our privilege to continue fostering growth in our lives, families, church communities, and new ministries. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of mothers and the mother church that supports us. We ask for your guidance, strength, and grace to be upon all mothers and those involved in nurturing new communities. Help us to continue fostering spiritual growth in our families and those communities. In Jesus' name we pray.
Amen. So I'm going to open this up to questions if you have any, but first I'm going to give you the question. I'm going to give you one question, and that is, what does any of this mean for Niles First UMC to be the mother of Go Be Church? That is the name of the digital church plant, by the way, Go Be Church, which by that name came from me saying, Go Be Jesus, Go Be Church. Go Be Jesus, Go Be Church. So what does it mean for Niles First UMC, and the, UMC the physical church, to be the mother of Gobi Church? In what ways can and will this church love, support, and offer blessings for the sake of birthing something new? And I can tell you some ways that you already have. So if your question is like, what do we have to do? What have we done? I can tell you some of the ways that you've already done this. One, the change in disappointment means you are offering time. By going from uh, three-quarter time here to half time here in the physical church and half time at the church plant, that means less time at the physical church or with the physical church. So one of the things you're already offering is time. And if you've ever had a child, you know that time is one of those things that immediately becomes a commodity. And you really have no control over, truly. We all have the same amount of time, but now as soon as you have a kid, everything shuffles. So that is the first thing. You're offering time. You're offering money. Theoretically, a reduction in time here should have meant a reduction in overall costs, but that, that didn't happen because of increased costs of different things, adding on some stuff. This new appointment is not saving Niles First UMC money. It's actually costing a little bit more than you were already paying. Uh, so you're offering money, time and money. These are two things that you have already offered, and they are, they are crucial to making this a success. And finally, and maybe the biggest one that is hardest to quantify, but the one that will have the biggest impact is you are offering room for people to grow. You are offering room for people to grow in a way that you will never. And what I mean is that it's not that you can't grow. It's that you're offering room for them to grow in a space that, would, that is not, you would not grow there. Ultimately, I'm saying you're offering to build and help enhance a space for people who are digital natives who grow in those spaces. Just like mothers do when raising children, when churches birth and support new faith communities, they do so with the expectation that the new faith community will be empowered to be self-sustaining and an independent entity. We all want our kids to grow up to be like us, but then we also know that there are elements of us we don't want them to have. So we want them to grow up to be themselves. We want them to grow up to be a productive member of society. We want them to grow up to be the best person they can be and that means being themselves and that is what you're offering here a chance for a church entity to be itself to have its own identity mother churches plant and grow new churches that have their own identities niles is offering the opportunity for people you might never meet to grow into their best selves by helping create a space where those people can be more like jesus that is the biggest thing that you're doing and you're like, that's not doing anything. Not getting in the way is one of the best ways you can help. If you look at this and you're like, this isn't for me. I'm never going to use this. I don't even understand what you're talking about. I get that. And I also hear that say, it's not for you. It's not for you. And that's also okay. What you can do, if that is you, if you find that to be you in this space, that is fine. That is not, I'm not criticizing you. What I'm asking you to do specifically is if you can't, understand it if you will never use it and even if you have a problem endorsing it then just step aside and let those of us who do know and do see just don't get in the way that is the bare minimum just don't get in the way that said if you will never use this but you see the benefit of it which i think that is more of us in here say i don't understand it but i do see the benefit of it then the ways you can be a great mother is by being proud of your child. And what do we do when we're proud of our children? See it all over Facebook all the time. We post pictures. We tell everybody we can about it. I love telling my friends about my, the games my kids play. I don't understand some of the stuff they're doing, but I talk about it anyway because they're excited about it. I see the benefit for them. So if that's you, if you don't understand it, you're never going to use it, but you're excited for your kid, you're excited about the opportunity here, the best thing you can do is support it verbally with your excitement and say, look at my kid. 
And you will have opportunities to do that over time. And if you are one of the people here who do get this, do see the need for it, and want to engage with it, well, then we have a bunch of ways that you can do that as well. A bunch of ways that you can do that as well that will be revealed and rolled out over time. And I invite you to be a part of that community. But the main thing today, the main thing for you all to know today is that this church, as the mother, one of the mothers of this church plant, y'all have already done a ton, whether you knew it or not. And I continue to anticipate more and more that this church will embrace and love and care for and support this new endeavor. So with that, if anyone has any question related to that or unrelated to that, is Terry back there? Can we get the microphone up here? I'm curious about the platform. I invite through Facebook as at least once a week people to join me in church here. That's one of my better benefits. Uh, this platform, is that the type of platform you're talking about? Or is there another internet platform that I use to introduce people on the web to Jesus? That's part of the question. The second part of the question, is that going to add people in these pews? Or is it going to reduce people from these pews? That's it's pretty confusing as to what you're saying. So you're yeah. Right. The first half of the question is, there will be many ways, many platform areas that people can connect initially, whether it's any of the social media platforms, YouTube, Facebook, all of that stuff. The links and different things will be out there for that. And so people will engage there, but they will all be funneled or directed to the Discord community. Discord is a, which I, meant, I think I talked about it last week. It's an app that you can use across all devices. It's very similar to Slack in the professional community. But that is where the community building, the engagement, that would be like the equivalent to the church building. So we all gather here on Sunday. This would be the place that we funnel people to, the Discord. So that is the shortest version of that answer. The other question, which I think is probably more of a concern for most of the folks in here, is it going to add physical members to our physical church or is it going to take them away? It's going to probably do neither. It's not going to, it's not meant to add physical bodies to this building. It is a completely, just let's put it this way. You can view it as a completely, as a second church in a two point charge that we do in our system. If I were down, if I were down at New Hope as a part of my appointment, we wouldn't expect that to be bringing folks here. But more directly, if we were birthing a physical church out of this building, Yes, technically it would be bringing numbers into the building, but it wouldn't be with the goal to bring people to this service. Do you understand what I'm saying? So in no way does a church plant ever, is the goal ever to build up the service that's already there. It is a completely separate entity. Churchill um, is a good example of when they birthed out 614. When they birthed out 614, 614 started as a small group that met in their building, and that grew to a point where they wanted to do their own worship service. So then it started as a second worship service. So yes, the overall numbers of the church were greater, but those people were never going to the morning Sunday service. They only ever went to that. So they were a, effectively a separate community that were housed in that building. This is the same case, whereas this is a completely separate community, and it, the goal is not to build in or build up this. We can do work on our own to be doing that, but that is not the work of building up a separate community, which is what effectively we're doing. Now, to the second part of that, will this be taking people out of this service, which is really the question you're asking? No. One of the questions I got asked by a, a relative of mine was, aren't you afraid people are going to stop going to church? No, the people that are going to be reached by this already aren't going to church. I don't expect anybody in this room to stop coming at the frequency that, that they already do, even if they were a part of that community. Um, I can only, on, true, if I'm being completely honest, I can only identify less than a handful of y'all who would actually engage in that community. I don't expect any of them will stop coming physically because they need community in that way. But the people who are going to, by and large, the people that are going to be attracted to the digital church model that we are planting they're not coming anyway. We wouldn't expect them to suddenly start. Now, that said, our online efforts that have been 
propelled out of this physical space have caused people to come here. You're here in large part because of what you witnessed or knew about me online. I'm not going to point out other folks. There are, to my knowledge, regularly, either whether people who have returned or people who are brand new here, about 20% of our current regular attendance came because they experienced something we were doing online first and realized that either the culture had shifted or that there was a change in leadership that was open to different things or whatever. So we are already doing the work that does what you're asking. That is not the goal or the purpose of planting a church, not in a physical way, not in a digital way. But thank you. That was, that's, I'm pretty sure that was a question that was on the mind of many folks. We're talking about the digital church being a separate church. Yeah. But how does our online service fit into that? It doesn't. So our online service has nothing to do with the digital church. Nope, they will have all of their own separate worship elements. Yeah, so th thank you. That's a, good, that's a great question, yeah. I won't be sharing out like the sermons I give here in that space. I will be recording fresh from scratch versions because the way what we do now is not, it's fine for a live stream and for what we do, but it is not built to engage digital natives. It's in, built to really engage with folks who are somewhere in between. And that's okay. We have things that we could improve to, we, and we have over the time I've been here improved it. But yeah, so they, the, first of all, they will only be having initially one live stream fully and fleshed worship service a month. Throughout the rest of the week, they will have sermons, music, prayers, children's thing, different elements all broken up into pieces in what I call asynchronous gathering. And that will be mostly housed on the YouTube and engaged with in the Discord. So, yeah, so our, what we're doing now, it won't change because we're, it's not, again, it'll be completely separate and filmed and produced in a, such a way to be much more like a video you might see on YouTube or in a training or whatever. This is not that. Yeah. My question, one more clarification. Okay. As our pastor, yes. when needed, I don't care what it's for, you are here. Yeah. Because that question was asked of me, this, and my answer was, of course. Yes, that does not change. That does not change. And as far as, like, so somebody asked me about visitation and pastoral care and all that. I already give emergency pastoral care as my primary way of, if somebody needs something, I'm there. If you've ever needed me at a thing, I've never not been there for you. That won't change. The, what might change is I might start giving even more of an emphasis on com community pastoral care. Like, y'all need to be caring for each other much more than you are. I've gotten some texts from people about other people this week, and that is exactly how it should be. Y'all are connecting with each other, and if it gets to a point where I absolutely am needed, then I'm there. Then I'm there. Right? So that, that might change, but it really shouldn't because I've already been having y'all live into that. I just might be more open about it now and say, okay, I need y'all to do the bulk of this interconnecting because truly, as much as y'all like a visit from the pastor, it doesn't nearly mean as much as when your friend shows up. And so when I hear people go, I haven't, like, nobody from the church has come to see me. Like, I haven't, I've been all by myself. Really? I know that you got a phone call from who belongs to this church and is a member every day this week. So you all need to start changing your mind about what it means to be getting care from each other. I am available, though, to answer that question 100%. When I'm needed, I'm there. And I still haven't decided whether or not I'm the, my time in the office, which affects almost none of you, is going to reduce. I haven't, we'll see. I haven't figured out that part of the schedule yet. But yes, I am, I am here. When I am needed, I am here. That, that, that will always be the case, whether I am quarter time or full time. When pastoral care is needed, that is a primary part of my job. It is a primary part of my role. So there should be no concern that, unless I'm on vacation or something, which is already the case, yeah, nothing there changes. Nothing there changes just because I'm reduced. The majority of the things that get reduced are going to be like administrative and or my ability to be involved in everything. I want more small groups. I'm not going to be able to lead up all the small groups. I'll only be able to do one. And the leaders are going to have to lead up the others. So that kind of stuff. But again, for the majority of y'all, you're not going to notice a difference. Was there another part to that? Okay, because, yeah, you know, I know, no, and that's, no, that's, 
that's exactly the kind of question I want people to understand that you're really not losing. You're really not losing much. Leona might. She might lose out. And I'm not sure she'd use it as a loss. <laughs> it's like, oh, one day less with you? No, darn. But truly, are there any other questions? We're only going to do this one more week, by the way. Just so you're like, when is this ever going to end? We're just going to do this one more week. Michelle, you had a question. It's more like a comment. So the majority of the parishioners in our new church plant are going to be from all over the country, correct? Yeah, they so can like, be. It's really mm -hmm. not going to affect the local body because for the most part, I would say, don't you think like 80, 90% of the people are going to be from other states? And That's a possibility. I, I, it's hard to say how that will work. It's possible that we get an influx of folks in our, from our conference because one of the goals with this is to be a lighthouse church for churches that have disaffiliated, but they have members who want to stay UMC that may not have a UMC in their area. So to, and by lighthouse, I just mean like a gathering. Like we are here in the storm of it all to sh shed some light. But so we could get that right now. As it stands, we have about 22 people in the discord and maybe two of them are from our conference. The rest of them are from across the country. Yeah. So that's the other thing. A lot of this is going to be, because there are no barriers, there's no telling how localized any of it will really be in terms of geography. So, yeah. So, yeah, you're right. It won't have much of an effect on the local church because most of those folks aren't local anyway. And I'm also just, I'm not trying to poach local folks. That's not the goal. So with that, seeing no others, we're going to go ahead and wrap things up here. If you, if you do have another question or a concern or comment or whatever, you just bring it to me, truly. I want to hide nothing here about this.